Okay, so we're going to do a wheel and axle here, and um, you'll be fortunate to know that wheel and axle is actually pretty similar to a lever, because when we look at it, when I show you it here, uh, you're going to notice that basically a wheel and an axle is basically a lever, um, just in a little bit different of a form. So a couple things we're going to look at first is um, here's our wheel and axle that we're going to use and I just want to show you basically what this wheel and axle how how it looks and how it looks like a lever and how we're going to basically I'm going to show you it looks like a lever okay um, first thing that we're going to do is in order for us to have a wheel and axle and a lever like we said like I told you you need to have a fulcrum. Well, fulcrum is where everything rotates around, and everything rotates around the center of a wheel and an axle. So I'm just going to put a fulcrum right here. I'm going to put a fulcrum right here. Okay. And so there's our fulcrum. And we're just going to draw a lever right off of here. Right off of it. That goes through the axle and through the wheel. Okay, so in this case, I'm saying the inside circles the axle and the outside is the wheel. All right, let's just say this is a um, uh, let's say it's a steering wheel. Okay, the steering wheel. There's there's two different time, two different types of wheel and axle. There's a second class and there's a third class. Okay, um, just like the lever, they they do the exact same thing. They're they're described the exact same way. So on a second class lever, oops, sorry about that. On a second class lever, you have your effort way out on the end or farther away from the fulcrum and you have your resistance Jeez, getting a little ahead of myself here. Sorry about that. Okay, so we have our. Here's a second class, second class lever, and it's called a second class lever because the effort, like the second class lever, second class wheel, is also has the effort way out on the end and the resistance in between, right in the middle. Okay, um, and we do them the exact same way. We handle them the exact same way as an actual lever. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little shape up here. And we're going to put some forces on this. Or forces. Let's say that the inside, the inside of it, let's just say, is... Um, I don't know. Ten pounds? Sounds good to me. And on the outside we have a hundred pounds. Okay. Well, just like lever, wheel, axle, you can do IMA and AMA. Well, if we have two forces, we can find it's AMA. AMA equals uh, force resistance, so that would be our 10 pounds, over our force effort. 10 divided by 100 is 10, so we get a 10 to 1 ratio. So for every 1 pound of effort, we're getting out 10 pounds of force. Okay, for every 1 pound of effort, 1 pound of effort, we're getting out 10 pounds of resistance. Okay? So it's actually helping us. Alright? And we could do the same thing to find IMA. You do the same thing, uh, but you would just do use the use the distances. Okay? So I'm gonna do a little change here. And we're gonna look at a third class lever. And basically third class lever, pretty simple. Like you know already, pretty standard 
that we know of just like a lever. Okay. So let's put our effort on the inside here and our resistance and our resistance way out here. Okay. And this would be this is a third class. And I would say an example of one of these would actually be like the wheel and axle of a vehicle. Uh, the motor turns the axle and the resistance is the actual friction on the road which happens all the way out on the end of the road on the end of the tire alright so that, that would be a third class lever would be a regular just wheel and axle on a car um, and again if we have our force our force we can find our AMA if we have our distances then we can find our IMA I'm gonna do the distance one this time and we'll just do it that way we get a little bit of each one we're going to say the distance to the effort is we'll say two inches and the distance to the resistance I don't know eight inches okay well IMA is found by doing the distance of the effort over the distance to the resistance. So we have 2 over 8. 2 divided by 8 is 1 over 4. Or point two five to one. And again, like I said before, this is the effort. So for every one pound of effort we put into the system, we're only getting out a quarter pound. Not a quarter pounder, we're getting out a quarter of a pound of force. So we're actually we're gonna have to work harder. We're gonna have to work harder. So just imagine how much how much a car is working, how much how not efficient it is for those wheel and axle, but we use them for other reasons. All right. Um, so we're going to do a little final example here with a wheel and axle. Really, I, wheel and axle is pretty simple as long as you understand a lever. Um, it's basically the exact same thing. It's not anything. So let's just say. That um, we're gonna come in here. And we're gonna we're gonna do this. Let me give you a real world scenario here. Okay, so we have a car, car's wheel and axle, and let's just say they give you a question um, that says a car's axle diameter, car's axle diameter. I'm just gonna put A D for the diameter of the axle is three inches okay three inch diameter axle and the wheel diameter is we'll say 25 okay so from you can't see the one side of it but from here to here is 25 inches 25 inches all right and if we zoom in from here do a different color for you from here to here is three inches okay so what we want to do is we want to go in and we want to figure out what the IMA of this wheel is all right figure out what the IMA of this wheel is and we're going to do that by using those numbers that they gave us. But the problem with the numbers they gave us, there's no real problem, but, but the issue with them is they're in diameters. All right? And when we're looking at the distances, we're not looking at the whole entire width of this thing. We're only looking at the, from the center here 
We're only looking at from the center of the wheel all the way out. So we really need the radius. That's what we really need. We really need the radius of the wheel. So we have to take these and we have to cut them in half. Cut them in half. So we're going to do that. We're going to find their radii right now. So 3 divided by 1.5, or I'm sorry, 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. Jumping ahead of myself here. So that's the distance to the axle. And because the car turns the axle, that's the DE. That's the distance to the effort. And 25 divided by 2 is 12 and a half. All right, and because that's where the t road meets the tire, that's where the resistance is, all the friction and all the weight. So that's our DR. Okay, so we're gonna swing over. We're gonna find IMA. IMA equals DE over DR. So DE is 1.5 and DR is 12 and a half. Okay, so when you do 1.5 divided by 12.5 you don't get a very big number. You get 0 0.12 to 1, basically. 0 0.12 to 1. And really, guys, this scenario right here, inch and a half diameter, or I'm sorry, inch and a half radius, and a 12 and a half inch uh, radius for the wheel, those are pretty realistic numbers. So we're talking the mechanical advantage for a wheel is for every one, one, pound that motor turns for every one pound of force it exerts on the axle we're only actually getting about a point almost a little over a tenth of of a pound a little over a tenth that's not that much i mean that's pretty pretty small pretty small all right so let's just say that we keep continue to use these numbers i'll leave it where it is All right, so we have, let me see if we can do something here. So we have a, use a really bright color. We have a diameter radius of one and a half. And we have a radius to the wheel of Twelve and a half. Okay, and we're gonna put a uh, we're gonna put a weight on this. Let's just say that the car can exert. The car is going to exert. Uh, we'll say oh I don't know. We'll say five hundred pounds. Car car's gonna exert five hundred pounds of force. We wanna know how much force can he overcome? How much force can that car overcome? And that's a question mark. Not a two. Okay? So again, just like a just like a lever. We're going to do it the same way. So the moment of the effort equals the moment of the resistance. And the moment of the effort is the force times the force of the effort times the distance of the effort equals I don't know why it keeps giving me all that is extras. The force of the resistance times the distance of the resistance. Okay? 
Well, force of the effort, we know, as 500 pounds. We know the distance to the effort is our radius of one and a half. We know our force of the resistance is what we're finding. And we know the distance of the resistance is our radius of that wheel, which is 12 and a half. Okay, so let's see, 500 times 1.5 is 750 pounds. And again, if I'm if I'm going too fast, just uh, pause. You rewind. Make sure make sure you're getting this. Twelve and a half. F R. Okay, and man, that is ugly. That's a twelve. And in order to get the FR by itself, we're going to divide by 12 and a half, both sides. So we're going to do 750 divided by 12.5, and you get 60 pounds. You get 60 is FR. Wow. So with a 500 pounds, 500 pounds exerted from the motor on the axle, on an inch and a half axle, we're only getting 60 pounds out of it. 60 pounds. 500 pounds compared to 60. That's not very good. Um, but that's, unfortunately, that you know, that's what we have to do. And, uh, you know, there are other reasons why, you know, we do make them that that way also but mechanical advantage for that system is very 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 low and that's a third class lever because remember the resistance is way out on the end All right. well I hope this helps and I'll see you guys next time